Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. Ephesians 5.25 reads, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. In the fifth chapter of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul gives three times the amount of instruction to the husband compared to the wife. I invite you to join me for part two of the message, The Christian Husband. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. There's a priority of marriage, but yet there's this permanence of marriage. We're in this thing for the long run, till death do us part. This is it. This is you and me. We're in this thing together. And then the purpose of marriage, and the purpose of marriage is that two are better than one. If you have two people, Ecclesiastes says it's better than one. And so two of us agreeing on earth can get something done on this earth. Two of us getting things done for the glory of God. So headship doesn't mean a superiority. In other words, because I'm the head of my family, I'm not better. You know, you could have a husband that actually IQ-wise is lower than the wife, but he's still, in God's eyes, he's the spiritual head of that family. Headship isn't about superiority. Headship is about responsibility. That's the part nobody wants. Who's responsible for this? You know, at the end of the day, Tom Arnold is. Who's responsible for what's going on in this house? At the end of the day, it's me. Here's a good thought. You can't fix your ancestors, but you can influence your descendants. You can't do a thing in the world about your ancestors, but you can do something about your descendants. You can do something about the ones that are coming after you. So the role of a husband is to love sacrificially, Ephesians 5, 25, to be a spiritual head, 1 Corinthians eleven three. be a provider, 1 Timothy 5, 8, to wash with the water of the word. In other words, speak the word over the marriage. Speak the word, Ephesians 5 and 26. The Bible says over in Ephesians 5, 29, he is to nurture and cherish her. And those words are protective words. So the role of a husband is to protect the wife. Now, there's a difference between a a contract and a covenant. Contract, we think in terms of I'm protecting my interest, but covenant is we're protecting your interest as well. I want to make sure you're taken care of. It's not so much geared around what's my rights, but what are my responsibilities? What do I need to do here? Now, I tell you all these stories because, you know, if y'all think I'm perfect, I know you do. Y'all think I'm perfect, but I have to share this every once in a while so y'all know I'm not. And That hadn't happened yet, but it might happen one day in the future. Y'all might be tempted to think I'm perfect. But I remember one time, you know, Sharon and I were talking about something, and I thought, she's just not getting this. She's, you know, she's off here, totally off. And I can remember the Lord just made it clear as well. He, He said to me, just get the beam out of your own eye. You know what you're doing, Tom? You're trying to get the splinter out of her eye, and you got a beam in your own eye. In other words, you're trying to fix her, but I didn't ask you to fix her. I asked you to fix you. And I'll always remember that. I mean, I was early in marriage, and I I was just so confident I was right, and I was absolutely right. And I, you know, you can be right and rude and be wrong. A husband is to provide physically, is but to provide emotionally, spiritually within the home. So he's a provider of the house. He's a protector of the house. And really, the the husband is a pastor of that house. He's a pastor. He knows the spiritual climate. He knows where people are, what's going on. And I'll be honest with you, I love pastoring you, but I enjoy pastoring my family. I enjoy, when you've got a 21-year-old, an 18-year-old, and a 17-year-old, you got a moving target every day of your life. Not, not so much on the 21, but the 18 and 17. It's, it's, I'm going to go on. Proverbs chapter 31, and verse number 28. Now notice this. This is the virtuous woman. It says, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and notice this, and he praises her. He praises her. So the husband the Bible says, is to praise the wife. Now you say, oh, what do you mean by praise her? Compliment her. Say good things about her. Enrich her. It's just like you pour 
water on a plant, that plant just begins to blossom. Well, the words that come out of a husband's mouth, they matter. And train your kids to compliment their mother. That family, in Proverbs 31, is the picture of a family that's a leading family in the community. It's a successful family in the community. It's a, a man who's a elder to the community. People look to him for wisdom. And the reason why it is that way is because there's a strong family unit there. The kids, the husband, wife. This isn't the word of knowledge, okay, but it's just human nature. You say, well, Pastor, I don't get any compliments from my husband. Well, whatever you desire, why don't you give a compliment? Why don't you sow a compliment? Why don't you speak words of affirmation? And it's interesting how just one kind word has a way of setting the tone and changing things. So Colossians 3 and 19 says, Husbands, love your wives, and notice this statement, and do not be harsh with them. So whether it's first century or whether it's today's century, there is a propensity within man for them to be harsh. They typically are stronger, typically are louder, typically have stronger voice, stronger, they can raise their voice to a higher level, decimals. And then that can be used in a wrong way. And the Bible says the husband's got to be careful that he's not harsh with the wife. Now, I like the Amplified. It says not to be harsh, bitter, or resentful toward the wife. So the husband can't be bitter or resentful. Now, here's what I've said before. You've got to look at your spouse and you've got to forgive them and say, I'm going to forgive you starting today and then we're going to backdate the forgiveness all the way. What's your birthday again? Tell me your birthday one more time. And backdate forgiveness all the way to the day they were born. Because I used to tell them till the, the day you were married, but I've discovered people have issues before they were ever married with people. So you have to look at that person and say, look, I forgive you not only for what you've done today, but we're going to backdate that forgiveness all the way back to your birthday, the day you were born, and I forgive you. Now, I don't encourage you, if you're in an abusive relationship, to stay in an abusive relationship. But how many know abusive relationship isn't, well, they, she burnt the toast, Pastor. She burnt. <laughs> Sometimes we use that term where it was a microaggression. It wasn't that bit. It was just a microaggression. It affected me. But I'm just saying there are people that are physically abused, sexually abused. There, there's things that go on that are very wrong. And so what do you have to realize? Look, we're going we're gonna to forgive, but yet we understand we're also going to hold people accountable. So notice Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse number 29. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. That phrase, no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. The problem is not that you think it. The problem is that you speak it. Holiness doesn't mean that you no longer or even have a wrong thought anymore. I no longer have a hurt heart or I no longer get rubbed the wrong way. I'm just at a place of holiness that, Pastor, I don't even get upset. As long as you're alive, you're going to have to deal with hurts and offenses and things of this nature. But we just realize, no, wait a minute. I'm not going to let that proceed out of my mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. So the Amplified says it this way, let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth. Notice that word ever come out of your mouth. I mean, if you say, well, look, you know, just cut down on doing that. <laughs> but it says, don't let polluting language, evil words, unwholesome words, worthless talk ever come out of your mouth but only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others as is fitting to the need and the occasion that it may be a blessing and give grace God's favor to those that hear it. So words make a marriage or words destroy a marriage. The quality of the marriage has a lot to do with the quality of the words. The quality of my marriage, the quality of your marriage, the quality of a family has a lot to do with the type of words that are exchanged in that home. We want to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, and the, the closest neighbor you've got is the one that's in two bedrooms down. If they're your kids 
or if you're a spouse, the one you're sharing a room with. I want what I say, the words that I say, to be beneficial to the spiritual progress of others as is fitting to the need and the occasion, that it may be a blessing and give grace to those that hear it. The right word at the right time is so powerful. The right words at the right time can make all the difference in the world. We have to just keep our flesh under and speak what is right. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse number 9 You know, I enjoy this scripture right here. It says, enjoy life with the wife whom you love all the days of your vain life that he has given you under the sun. Now, he's looking at life from his standpoint. He had sown to his flesh. He had gone after a lot of foolish things, Solomon did. But he's looking back in his life and he said, you know, if I would give him wisdom right now, I'd say just enjoy life with the wife whom you love all the days of this vain life. He was very disappointed how he had made decisions, but he was saying, just enjoy life with your wife. That's my recommendation. As you know, he had 700 wives, 300 concubines, and he realized this is crazy. Then he looked back saying, well, just enjoy what you have. Now you say, oh, Pastor, we got to go to a five-star restaurant to have a good time. You can go to a five-star restaurant and be miserable, or you can have a very simple gathering and simple circumstances, happiness is an inside job. Happiness is in the heart. And so, you know, just enjoy. You say, well, pastor, I'm not happy because of the circumstances that I'm in. But here's what I'm going to promise you. There are people that have circumstances that are way worse than yours that are happier than you are. There's people that are dealing with a lot bigger issues in life. I mean, you know, I'm a pastor. I hear people talk about diagnosis and financial things and challenges, and I'm like, wow, that's, that's a challenge right there. And so I'm just saying, just enjoy life right now. I'll promise you this. If you're not enjoying life today, you run about a 90% chance of never enjoying life in the future. You just have to realize it's, it's not always this destination that I'm going to get to. It's... Um, It's the journey. It's going on. I I just want to read this from Ecclesiastes 9.9, the Message Bible. Relish life with the spouse you love each and every day of your precarious life. Relish life. Sharon and I, we like to get tacos. And and you say, Pastor, is it Ted's? No, it's not Ted's. This real gourmet place? No, trust me, it's not gourmet. We just drive to a little place and have some tacos on a Sunday night and burritos. And and it's honestly costs less than 15 bucks, but it's a fun little journey out there. So you don't have to feel like it's got to be five. I mean, you don't have to have the cloth on the table to make it a special moment. I'm good with the cloth. I mean, you know, I'm okay with that, but it's an inside job. Thanks for joining me for this message titled, The Christian Husband. One translation of Proverbs 18.22 reads, Find a good spouse and you'll find a good life. Whenever you seek to build a good marriage, you will soon enjoy an early heaven. The call of a Christian husband is to love, to lead, to provide, to protect, and to be a spiritual covering to his wife. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.